Do you sound good? <clears throat> I, I always sound good. I'm not worried about me. You always look good. I have a great podcasting voice, I've been told. Yeah, but it's, uh, you need more emotion. Remember right, when I right. told you that and you said, no, people tell me I have a good <laughs> podcasting voice. And then you came at me. I didn't come at, no one. Fucking I, came at you, me with you, that criticism. That was not constructive criticism. That was just straight up criticism. No, bro. It wasn't. Oh, I felt attacked. Well, you should never feel attacked from me. And now all that I hear when I hear my voice is the stupid monotone voice I've got. I was born with this voice. <laughs> and you know what I learned? If you, if you give somebody a correction, if they can't fix it in five minutes. You can. You know how you fix it? How? You stop talking like this and talk like this. <laughs> All right, well, even though you're an asshole, I'm <laughs> having you on the show <laughs> to boost your, your personal clout and talk a My little bit about you. My clout is our clout, though. That's the truth. If your clout goes up, up. Remember that text I sent you that night or two ago? Yeah. The one you didn't reply to? I was asleep. That's fair. Yeah. I was up late. You've been up late lately. Well, you need, to, you need to work on that. Yeah, well, last night I had the birthday party. How was that? It was really fun. Is that your first really social fun. event in a while? Uh, second social event since prep. The first one was my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's second in what, like eight uh, weeks? What is it? I'm, tw- I was tw- I'm 12 weeks out today, and I started at 21, so nine. Like nine weeks. I've yeah hung out with people twice. Well, I hang so out with you. like once every four and a half weeks, <laughs> you get to do yeah. something on average. Yeah. it's it's. I, I like leaving parties at 9 p.m., though. It's like... You still go and you're like there when everyone's having a good time. It's not like you're there till, you know, 3 a.m. And got people are still up just trying to make the night go on. It's yeah. like you're there for when it's fun, like 8 to 9, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is pretty early. Yeah. You know what? I actually, like, I kind of agree, but my 9 p.m. version, like, it's a little bit later. Mm. But, like, I've started skipping out at about, like, 12 or 1. Yeah. That's late enough. You can go home. You can get to bed at an okay time. It's a little bit too late. But then you wake up the next day and your day isn't wrecked. Yeah, no, I I think that would be perfect. Like in the off season, like if I could do this and just like instead of nine, though, like midnight. Yeah. You know, one night a week or whatever. I think that'd still be lots of fun. Yeah. And I think you like that's not going to like be a huge impediment to anything. It's like it's exactly what you said at like three in the morning when people want to keep the party going and it's clearly yeah. already over and then nothing good happens. No, nothing ever. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I've been having a ton of fun without <clears throat> drinking, too, which I'm really happy about. Because I think I can keep that going in the off season. Yeah, I've actually been enjoying my activities without drinking more. Yeah, it's, I noticed uh, that. Like everything we've done with the supplement world team, there hasn't been any booze. Yeah, well, you know what? That's actually how it started. Like we used to actually do like fitness things, and then once or twice a year we'd get together. Like, and then when we did our drinking, yeah. we, we did enough to last us for the next six like months. the Christmas parties. Yeah, exactly. So a ton of fun. Yeah, and then somewhere along the line. I think when we started like getting way more people involved all the time, then it seemed like there was always like an event that we should have some drinks for, you know, it was this event for this person's store or this person or that. But now like we've kind of shifted back to like, like revolving around the fitness thing. Like we can go for a workout together, go for a good meal. No, exactly. I I still think you can have that at like, you know, like the Christmas party, but just like one or two big events a year, you know? Yeah, when it starts turning into a couple of months, like that's yeah. just it's too much. Yeah, exactly. No, I think you guys are doing great with that now. Well, thank you. Okay, this is supposed to be about you, though. Awesome. I wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about something that you don't really talk a lot about yourself, um, which I respect. I like the humility. It's a big reason why I think a lot of people want to support you. But I think that, well, I've always kind of wondered until we started hanging out more, and I think a lot of people wonder, like, what your actual goals are and what goes into achieving them for you everybody knows you want to be huge everybody knows your bodybuilder <laughs> but you know like what is like driving you right now like we can talk short term and long term yeah um, yeah right so as for like my personal goals i never really ever verbalize them because i I'd, I'd rather do it and then say look what i did you know i don't i don't really like to speculate but i mean my short term goal is uh to win Canadian the junior Canadian nationals and then you know like top three in my class at men's would be would definitely be an achievement for me too which is like I think something that a lot of people don't know that like you're still competing in the junior division yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so I that's what I did like I competed at nationals two years ago right three 2017 
and yeah, just did juniors. Uh, that wasn't my best showing, so I kind of have to prove to myself this time that I can, you know, place in the top mix with those guys. You were going through a lot that last time. We don't need to get into that, but that was a tough time for you. Yeah, though. no, it was, <clears throat> yeah, not a great point in my life at all. Yeah, so I think it'll be cool to see, like, how this goes for you now with a couple extra years under your belt and just more life experience. Because I don't think that people who haven't done a prep, I don't think they quite know, like, how mentally taxing it can all be. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, I'm just in a better spot mentally now, which makes all the difference with this. Yeah, so you want to win Junior Canadian Nationals, and that is from the time of this. 12 12 12 weeks weeks. today. 12 weeks today. And how do you feel about your shot at that? Like, and like, like realistically, how do you feel? Like, I know you're scared to pump your own tires <laughs> sometimes, but like. Yeah, well, jun- juniors, I, I think I'm in a great spot for. Uh, men's, I don't know who's competing. Yeah, and that in bodybuilding, that does make a big difference. Who shows up, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you think you have a pretty good shot for the juniors this the Juniors, year? yeah, if everything goes good. Um, yeah, like I sent photos to my coach this morning, and we're really starting to starting to pull the weight down now we i think i'm doing like five low carb days this week and too high and what i just uh realized when i was in the shower this morning i don't know how i didn't put, put this together before but i'm started this prep at about exactly 30 pounds heavier than my last prep and i thought i was big on my last prep so how much stage weight do you figure that will translate to if you start well, i don't know like bigger. see this is another thing i don't even like saying <laughs> yeah, just kind of <laughs> see how it goes. I don't know. Like I started my you last have fans now, brother. They want to hear fans. <laughs> my mom. Yeah. Um, Hi, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I started my last one at two eighty five and competed at about two fifty. So this okay. one I started at basically three fifteen. So that's quite a big difference. Like I don't think it's unreasonable then to expect like ten to fifteen pounds. Fifteen might be high, but you know, like does that seem realistic? Definitely, yeah. Like, if it was somebody else telling you this about themselves. Oh, yeah. See, it's easier to say it that way. <laughs> then, Well, then I'd tell them that they're probably going to be 20 pounds heavier. Well, there you go. So there's a good chance that that's possible for you. I mean, like, I, yeah. understand, I understand where it's weird predicting your own success, right? Because then if you're wrong, then it sounds like... Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather just do it and then, you know, speak on my experiences. Yeah, and I, I think that's a likable trait. But also, lots of people are curious about this stuff. Yeah, so. but no, that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's cool. And um, so do you feel like pressure knowing that maybe you didn't and I'm going to put it on you, but like knowing that <laughs> yeah. this is your last year to compete as a junior, yeah. do you feel some pressure from that? Um, honestly, I feel really confident for juniors. I do. And if, you know, even if it didn't go my way this year, then it would be, be time for me to move up and just do men's. You know, I, I feel like an adult. I should <laughs> probably compete with them. I will. Like, like I said, I'll do both, but I'll be competing exclusively with in the men's after this year yeah so like if something happened this isn't like this because this isn't your long-term goal this is like a stepping stone right you want yeah. to win that junior nationals which would be great yeah and okay that's cool and then so you are competing in both in the same show yeah like like my main goal is top three in in, in my men's. class yeah and like when do you think somebody's at their peak for bodybuilding because obviously you're gonna be competing against people with another 10 years than you yeah most guys peak at like probably 35. 35? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 35 I would say is definitely a peak. Like, th- yeah, 30 to 35 is when guys make like, th- yeah, 30, 30 to 35. So do you hear many guys like placing in that top three range at a young age? Like I know what's happened, right? When you look at Regan Grimes or Chris Bum said, there's guys doing yeah, it. Yeah, see, there's two, there's two phenoms and Dallas McCarver comes to mind. Yeah. No, definitely not a ton of young guys, but I mean, not many people got into it as young as me either. Yeah, how old were you? Well, 15 when I took it serious. Yeah, so you're like eight years into this. 10, yeah. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, because I, I started when I was 13, but I started taking it serious when I was oh, 15. Oh, okay, so Sorry. 10 years into actual Yeah, training. yeah, I've, I've been training for 10 years, yeah. And so when did, like, this become part of the goal? You know, like, most people start working out, they want to get jacked, maybe they want to get girls or whatever, but, like... And for girls, like, I actually don't, I should do a podcast with the girls sometime because I know <laughs> they have a lot of different motivations for working out sometimes than guys do. Some of them want to get jacked, like guys, some of them, they all have different goals. It'd be cool. Yeah. To, but Probably after my first show, it turned into like, I'm doing this for competing. Yeah. But even before that, like most high school kids don't just go do a bodybuilding show, right? Like I was into the gym heavily in high school, but I like, it didn't even cross my mind to yeah. be a bodybuilder. Yeah. No, I, 
I definitely loved it like ever since I started. Well, like I said, I did it for a couple of years and I turned 15 and that's when I decided I wanted to compete. So I trained two years to compete and then I did it when I was 17. And then after that, I was like, okay, I want to do this. Because when I, like after that first show, I was still very much at a point where I, you know, just looked looked good, you know, like I wasn't like extreme. Yeah, you had like a I nice didn't have an extreme physique. look. Yeah. Yeah. So like, okay, so you started young and you're still young. And you're pursuing this pretty heavily. So, like, there must have been a lot of sacrifice along the way. Yeah, well, it definitely wasn't a normal life, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I'm sure you've, you've had your fun and you've done your <clears throat> stupid shit that other kids do. But, like, you know, like, did you have to live pretty differently from your peers once yeah, you decided? De- oh, definite, definitely, yeah. It's like, what kind of things, like, did you have to miss out on that normal people? Well, you know, just all the partying and stuff. Is um, that pretty much it, though? Like, is that the big difference you don't get to party probably yeah um yeah i would say that's that's the big well at my age like that's the biggest thing i feel like i'm missing out on yeah yeah and then i guess like but i feel life, oh, i feel like i mentally like matured quite fast doing this because like by the time i was like well i guess it's only like a year ago by the time <laughs> i was like 22 like i was just kind of over it you know like even like when i was in the off season and you know, probably could have had a bit more leniency with my lifestyle. Like people would want to do stuff. I go out. I I just don't want to. I feel like I wanted to party like when I was twenty, twenty one, and now I just feel like I'm old or yeah. over it. Well, I think that sometimes, like once you have something specific in mind that you want to accomplish, like I don't think there's anything wrong with people having fun in you know their twenties and stuff. So I don't mean this in like a judgmental way at all. But once you have something specific on your mind that you want to accomplish if partying is going to get in the way of that yeah you have to either decide to give it up or to not accomplish what you set out to right and that could be career stuff that could be fitness stuff it could be anything yeah well like i'm a very like like all or nothing type of person so i like i want to put everything i can into this now and see if i can be good because if i'm not going to be a good bodybuilder and like that's a fact i'm not going to bodybuild yeah, and I think that's something else that's that like I, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do this until I'm forty. If you know, I'm not not uh, seeing any success in it. But not when you say I, not do this, like you mean not do what you're doing, right? Because like I feel like you're a lifer for like health and fitness. Oh and yeah, for thing. sure. Yeah, for sure. I I mean competing. Yeah, and because th- even just going down to like being a normal jacked person gives you a lot more freedom in your life yeah oh it's it's mostly just eating really i just eat normal <laughs> like i'd eat like four <laughs> times a day that would be awesome yeah because your schedule is like well i just hit the star button on this we wow. can, uh, edit that out, <laughs> or we can leave it in um but your lifestyle is like very like constrained by your eating like there's <clears throat> things you can't do if it's yeah gonna, if it's gonna make it so you like can't on, get a meal like on any of my high calorie days like i don't even let anyone in my house because i <laughs> like <laughs> like i won't hang out with anyone because i you know it's there's like 45 minute or an hour breaks in between eating and i'm bloated and i'm just eating like all day and i just don't want to be around anyone right yeah if you feel bloated and uncomfortable yeah that makes sense i'm sure people can relate like after you know, everybody's been there where they eat way too much one night and just want to sit on the couch in peace. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of like that. It's up twenty four hours every day. Yeah. So like the the sacrifice though, it's like, does it feel worth it when you have that goal, or is there like days when you question it? Oh yeah. Well, it's a mental game. You're up and down. You know, like t- today was pretty good. My photos look look good. I got a great coach, man. Like Patrick, he's he's super supportive, and he <clears throat> he just knows what you know, athletes need to hear at certain times, right? So does he work with you, like, on, like, the mental stuff, too? Like, obviously, I'm not talking, like, in a counseling way, but, like, yeah, you know, like uh, he's supportive. He's, he, I know I know he's there if, if I need him, Yeah, which is big. Yeah, but you haven't really had to. Uh, nothing major, no. I guess, like, does it get more difficult, like, mentally the deeper you get into the prep? Yeah, for sure. When your dietary fats start getting really low, I feel like your brain just doesn't work as well. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, like, that that makes perfect sense, honestly. And, like, all those, like, hunger hormones, like your leptin and ghrelin and all those things are thrown yeah. off. And, like, yeah, you're just in a very unique state that most people, like, will never be in. Like, I'll probably never be in that state. Because it's, like, you know, dieting down to, like, 8 or 10% body fat where you look really good is very different than, like, that 8% and then down. Yeah. 
Yeah, but no, I got I got great support system. You is know. your family pretty supportive of your my bodybuilding mo- stuff? Mom is. Mom loves mom loves bodybuilding. My brothers are good. Yeah. Your brother's a pretty big boy. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my little brother now he's packing meals everywhere he goes. He's Oh, he's into it too. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well you're you're kinda getting to the point where you would start like inspiring people to to live a certain way. I mean, like even now that we've been spending more time together. Just like by default, I've been way better about my choices. <laughs> like it, it, it actually makes a difference who you surround yourself with and like, you know, what, sure. what kind of stuff you take in, like even on your phone, like what are you watching on a day to day basis? Like yeah. if you're watching people partying, you're probably more likely to like, yeah, absolutely. That lifestyle. Yeah. No, I had to take a lot of people off Snapchat for sure. Just cause I couldn't like watch the stories anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, well then you get FOMO too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but now like. I mean, honestly, one of my biggest supports is probably my training partner, Morgan. You know, he's, I call him whenever I need, and I do a lot. And yeah. Just talk to you. He's wise. Yeah, and he understands it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or he's been wants to. It. Wants to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he's only competed, like, the two times that he has. but <sighs> One season, yeah. Yeah. He definitely, like, he's wise beyond his personal experience in that area. <laughs> for sure. Well, it's it's how he's lived for a while now. Yeah, well, and he's got a good coach, too. Yeah, yeah, he's really close with his coach. Yeah, so after this show coming up, then what's next for you? <clears throat> that's that's a great question. Um, That depends how it goes, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, like, best case scenario, like, in my head, realistically, you know, if I win that juniors and then get top three in my class, then I'll probably just, do and then just wait until next year and do North Americans and Nationals. Just keep hitting those two shows and until you win a pro card and then compete on the pro circuit. Yeah, because I guess for you that's the next like step, right? Like, is you do this show, hopefully win junior nationals, and you keep doing it until you're a pro. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And then you go back to school in the fall here, right? Yes. So this is your last. Yeah, this is my last uh, year of school. Well, last I only have one more semester. Thank God, man. I'm I'm ready to be done <laughs> school. It feels like I've been in it. Well, I've been in it since my whole life, right? So what are you going to graduate with? Um, a degree in management. Oh, cool. So. You should give me some tips. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll open up a new store here. Yeah. Well, you're always welcome to join the Subworld family in that capacity. But um, so, okay, you're going back to school. Do you find that this lifestyle interfere with school or not so much because a lot honestly of recently it has been i've and i've totally put this before <laughs> i've totally put this before <laughs> school which um <clears throat> it's gonna be a f- it's gonna be a full semester this upcoming one because i'm taking a full class load which i don't usually do so we'll see how that goes but i mean you know it's just just wake up earlier and go to bed later if you can't fit everything in the day right yeah. Have your grades always been like decent throughout yeah, the Yeah, I've always I've always been one of those people that don't really need to study to get good grades, which helps yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Do you actually like go to your classes and stuff? Like you um, know, good well, student or depends what I'm doing, you know. I'm eating lots of food now, so I just stay home and eat. Yeah. And do it all online. Ronnie always says he got like straight a's all through college he graduated with honors in yeah. accounting yeah like that's impressive yeah I was, will, will you have honors well i have one what is how high know. is that i don't know maybe i doubt it <laughs> i doubt it maybe if i ate less and went to more class yeah like it's got to be tough balancing it. and then you also have to balance it with like a farm life that yeah no that's the real challenge that's the real challenge so what are the challenges with balancing this goal with your farming um well my mom makes it definitely helps a ton because she cooks all my food but it's yeah like we just work long days like we'll work you know 16 hour days and then on top of that your two hour workout an hour cardio so you know you're only going to sleep three four hours for that you know month and a half for harvest so it's it's really just like sleep deprivation is probably the biggest battle yeah no kidding and so is that going to be going on during prep at all this year yeah it's going to be going on in few weeks here <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna be doing this while you prep for junior nationals yes wow see that's <laughs> something that nobody else really has to i shouldn't say nobody but nobody else that i know of has to balance something like that with every, their prep it's been every single prep bro 
<laughs> Can you imagine how easy it's going to feel for you? Oh, you I know. You don't have to do that. No, I know. I know. I love the feeling when I come back to the city and you're like four weeks out and you're like, oh my God, like this. This is, this is like how, how people's whole preps have been. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine um, just from like the few Saskatchewan farmers that I do know, I imagine your dad doesn't um, get lenient on you because you're on prep. <laughs> no. Oh, God, no, man. <laughs> that doesn't matter to him. No, no. It's I, I have a job to do, and I do it, and it yeah. doesn't really matter what I do outside of that. I imagine a lot of that, though, is like what contributed to the work ethic you do have, right? I think so. For sure it would. Yeah, because you definitely have like an abnormal work ethic, especially for somebody your age. Like, you know, like sometimes that takes time to mature yeah. in somebody, but like you've always been good at well, as long as I've known you've been good at like thinking long term and like delayed gratification is a big thing that a lot of young people don't have or don't seem to have. And you seem to understand the cool. concept of putting in that hard work and sacrifice early for a reward that will come later. Yeah, well, it's been like that my whole life for sure. Just living, just living on the farm and yeah, we just work to be honest. I don't know. Like there wasn't when I think back, there's not a whole lot of like fun <laughs> memories I have. <laughs> There's a, sure there's a lot of good map there's a lot of good memories but well, most of the memories are well just working towards a goal you know whether that's getting the crop off or but it's probably kind of like a fun rewarding feeling when you have a good like a good year right like oh yeah you and your family all work together on something yeah and then it actually like pays off yeah yeah that's pretty cool and then you spend half you the, growing up though you did get to spend like half the year in australia every year i feel like nobody knows that yeah yeah so i've been to australia it's I think it's like seven it's 17 i want to say 17 times because i went there every year of my life until university and what do you do when you're on australia for half the year <laughs> just hang out <laughs> <laughs> like did you have to go to school there yeah yeah so i went to like a lot of elementary school in australia and then when i was in high school the teachers would just like send some homework and then i'd just yeah, hang out and do homework and and so was that ever challenging like living in two different places across the world or was it just cool it was just normal because I like I did it every single year of my life, right? So and you had friends in Australia yeah. and friends here. Yeah, I got lots of friends in Oz. Do you still have friends there? Yeah, like you could if you went there, there'd be people you could oh, hang I, out there's, with. And there's some people I still talk to every day from Australia. Really? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Chris Cogberg, shout out to him, personal <laughs> trainer. That's cool. If you ever did, uh, if you ever at like the Arnold Australia or something, then you'd have you'd have a support network there. Yeah, no, for sure. That I was actually thinking about comp competing in an Australian bodybuilding show when I was there, but it, it ended up didn't work out with the dates. If it ever did work out, you honestly like should do that. Be That'd be fun. a pretty cool experience. And so, like, do you like do you have a place you can stay if you go to Australia? Does your family have? Yeah, Dad has a place. He's got a place there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. Different life, man. Your whole life is just different. Living in Australia half the year, working on the farm, <laughs> you've been bodybuilding preps, being 300 pounds at 22. Yeah. I know you're well, 23 when you, now. When you say all that out loud, it does sound kind of odd. <laughs> different life, man. It's That's why like doing these things probably feels so weird for you, but I think it's like interesting to a lot of people. It's different than how I lived. That's for fucking sure. Yeah. And it's like, it's cool. Yeah. Well, we should go there. Dude, I would love to go to Australia. Come. I would love to. I should have went a couple of years ago. My girlfriend got this like contract to go do this dance thing there. But like, yeah, right. our, yeah our business was just like too young. Like we didn't have the systems in place. Well, where it I still could be is gone. relatively yeah, young. I could right. be gone now though. Like yeah. I could be gone for two weeks as long as I had like cell phone service. But like back then, if I was gone for three days, I'd come back to a disaster. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> things have changed, man. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for doing this. I think that, uh, like I said, it probably feels weird for you, but I think it's interesting to me and a lot of other people just hearing what goes into creating this. Yeah. Well, no, I appreciate you having me on and you know, like we should do this more. Like I said, I got a lot of things to say, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you give me a platform <laughs> to say it on. I'll never forget that. There's some We're opinions. in the car and you're, Josh, I need a microphone. <laughs> Why? Because, <laughs> man, I got things to say. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. Well, thanks, Travis. All right. See you later, Josh.